if you've ever wanted to uh, tackle the, the uh, Chinese market and you wanted to know how to do so, uh, that's what the next panel is all about. So I'd like to introduce to you Juan Li from Portal to China, whose uh, Portal to China is located in China and in Montreal. So you can ask her about that at the end. Good afternoon, everybody. So I'm Joan, Joan Lee. For Chinese, I call it Joan. That's the Spanish is Juan. <laughs> okay, I'm Joan Lee from Porto to China. I'm the customer accountant uh, manager. And the first is here, we have this uh, logo for the company as Porto to China. So what is the company doing? So this company is a consulting service company, just guiding you to have a better understanding of the Chinese market and the Chinese users, and assisting you to set up the business relations and launch your products successfully there. Myself, I'm involved in game industry for five years, working with a bug tracker uh, in Montreal and in China as well, as the studio manager and the studio coordinator. So, today I wanted to present you the general reasons. Oops. How come it? Just a second. Okay, today I wanted to present you the general reasons why your games will not work in China. What are the unique features of the Chinese market and Chinese gamers? So let's look at the following chart. Let's have a uh, overview of the market in China. I, I believe we already have a lot of information about the market there. Just now the panel already said, you see the market is booming there. It's huge, thanks to the populations and the government supported the, this industry. And we have, you see by the end of 2014, uh, there are over 550 million uh, gamers, mobile gamers in China. And mostly from the chart you can see it's the Android devices for the game. So Android uh, devices dominated the market and over three quarters, over three quarters of the market share. And then for the games, we're back to the games, you see. What the games they are playing for such a huge amount of the gamers? What are they playing? So here, I'm sorry, I didn't mark out all the types of the games. This chart is for the types of the games. The big proportion there, it's casual games. So we can see that the most popular games in China is casual games. And then I would like to have you see your attention about the one, 6% in red, that part. That part stands for the shooting games. And recently I get some contact from the publishers in China. Actually they show great interest on the shooting games. They want me to source overseas if there are any good shooting game games for Chinese market. And as I beginning said, they have some unique features there for the market, for the users, even for the developers. Let's see the workflow of the game development. For out of China overseas, the way, especially the Western world. Yeah, you see, while you develop a game, first you have a storyboard, 
And then you decided to put it as a game, so you have then you have the coding, programming, art, and then that's a development. And then after that, you go to QA. While well, you finish the development, you go to QA to see whether or not it's a good game. It's called, is it uh, can be launched, uh, you see, submitted in Apple Store, the things. And if it's not success, and then back to you, you do some modification, the things. But in China, it doesn't work like that. This chart shows you how they work exactly. We have the storyboard, and then start the development. Same. Some partially is the same, OK? And then they start the open test instead of QA to have the professional QA company to do the QA. No, they will not do that. For their QA can be finished the development and start Q open test, or in the middle of the development, they already started. For their testing, open testing, frankly speaking, it's not for the quality of the game. It's a trial for the market. And also, it's the promotion activity. So they try the market. After a while, they say, OK, it seems a lot of gamers interested in my games. And then, OK, we continue to put in money to continue the development. If they say, OK, we do not have the positive response from the gamers, OK, forget it. We terminate the development. But we laid the server and laid it down naturally till no one is interested in it. So that's the thing, that's another difference. And the next, you see, I want to say, as I said, I wanted to share with you, you see, what's the unique features of the market, developers, and the gamers. So let me give you the brief ideas about, you see, the gamers there. So the first I want to know, what do the gamers want to achieve when they play games? Do you have any idea for that in China? OK, I can tell you. The first one is, safe, is called, I said, is a self-satisfaction. So that is achievement satisfaction. Under this, I can say three points on that. First, I play, I can defeat someone. I can defeat the other gamers. I get the satisfaction. And second, I conquered the game. Because I got, you see, my name always on the little top. I get a satisfaction. I'm the winner. So as you said, in Western world, perhaps you challenge yourself. You want to play a game, you challenge yourself. But in China, perhaps it's more you wanted to defeat others, get that satisfaction. And another important issue is, as called, I call it, one up, uh, upmanship. What does it mean? One upmanship is, OK, the thing you have, the assets, the things in the game you have, I also have. But the thing you do not have, I also have. So I'm proud of that. That's, that's a feeling, OK? And also another thing is in the game, why they, I play the game. It's a kind of a social life. Nowadays, you see that people spend a lot of time just online with people, communicate with people by the, you see, uh, some social medias, OK, social platform. You say, I'm happy I can face to you face to face to talk to each other. Instead of just send a message, we exchange some ideas. And uh, another, of course, play games must have some fun from the game itself. And for the casual game, some 
you see, mostly to kill time, to pass the time. So for this, I, I think no one can deny that. Let's go to the metro station, go to the bus station. Even in the play, you can see how many people just, uh, you see, focus their eyes on the, on the screen. But recently, I have one sentence I'm very interested in. Uh, so they say, the world will be better if apple and blackberries are owning fruit. So you can see that. People really, really spend time on, see, on the screens. Okay, for the next, you see, for the game itself, you see, I said, for, the chi for, for in China, you know, the social, I right, just to say social function is so important for the game. The first slide I, st I told you, you see, for this, what do they want to achieve? The social life. So I wanted to put a specific, you see, a slide on this, the social, social function. Why is it social is so, so important in the game for them? First, provide the easy access to the games. Look at this, I get this one. This is a very recently very popular game in China, casual game. So you can see that, I'm sorry I didn't translate into English. So that is for this game, you need to create a account to access to the game. So just to use your WeChat account, use your QQ, and then you can access to the game. So I play, I didn't register, I just say, okay, I'm the visitor, you see, I'm the guest, I click, and then I play. So this is very important for the Chinese, they must have an easy access with a social platform. And another thing is important is for the real-time com communication. In China, it's unique. We cannot use Facebook at all. We cannot. So we need to really link, to, you see, for the WeChat, QQ, like this platform. So we can communicate with friends and also make friends while playing game. So that's very important. And also, another, another function in the, for the game in social parts is have the updates of your friends. Because nowadays people not really spend time to talk to each other, to go to visit each other. So we just list up what happened to this guy, what happened to my friend. And, of course, the leaderboard is so important because I can get the satisfaction from that game and also know what's the status of my friends, how they get the improvement or, you see, really behind me. Another thing that's important is the in-game gift. I think this one is a little bit different from the games developed in the Western world. I think yesterday I listened to the, the, the other CC uh, uh, speech. He mentioned, I'm very interested, say, because of the cultural background is different in China, gifting is so important. It is a part of the, part of the culture. And then that, by exchanging the gift, that's a way to maintain their friendship. Perhaps you already know something about the business in China. This is a little bit further for this. If you want to make a business in China, make friends first. Set up the relation first. So that is, you see, maintain the friendship, maintain the relationship is so important. And it's easy, I believe, it's so easy to do, you know. So you exchange the gift there. So that is a social part. In China, they put a really emphasis on that. So another thing I see here, I mentioned that also is here I want to say, in Western world, when you launch your game, you almost finish as a developer, you finish your work. But in China, it's just a start because the marketing, promotion uh, activities that really affects your, 
you see your users. And another thing that Lucky Joe, you know, as Chinese, I'm sorry to say that, I'm Chinese, and we like to gamble. So Lucky Joe, I just wanted to try. What, where is my luck? How can I, what I can win? And here, you see, I saw, I, you see, I just present you the two screenshot. This, the, the right one is the lucky draw. And then you see you have a right, you have the, you have the assets free. And this one, and then the second one, and is uh, get some rewards. And you see, you have, you see, you, you log in every day, and you get a reward, you get a diamond. And then you have a free round of a playing. Okay, now I see, I just to give you some brief ideas, we go quickly, see. Now about the monetization in China, see, of the games in China. Here is the culture background. You know, in China, generally, people do not believe do not like to pay, they believe, before I, do, before I know your products, I'm not willing to pay you. I don't know it's a crap or it's a good thing. Let me try first. In China, it's give to take. So that's important here. So in China, you see, if you wanted to launch it, <laughs> at the beginning, I, su I would suggest you to have a free download play games. And the focus is in-app purchase. So in China, there is no, it's a very, very interesting phenomenon there. I discussed with the gamers, I discussed with the developers, even the publishers, I discussed with them. They give me the conclusion. What is your idea of successful launching? What's your perception? Successful, what does it mean, successful launching? Is it download or the revenue you have? In China, it's really something. Perhaps one game, very successful. They have a lot of downloads, but they are not the one who earn the most money. Perhaps some game not really, really good. Not many people, but they have a good monetization design, and then they get a lot of money. So that's the something interesting. And of course, you see, for purchase, you see, in-app purchase, generally they have a two parts. It's a consumable, you see, as everywhere, you see the assets, and then you give the tr uh, some tricks to help you to to pass the difficulty levels. And another thing it's important is about the gift. Gift part, because that's why it's really related to the culture there. So it's important in their daily life. So if you wanted to have your game successful, so you needed to put that part there. And So another topic, sorry, another topic is about, you see, game publishing in China. It's not easy to publish a game in China. Why? For iOS, it's very simple. You can submit it directly to Apple Store. But how about, you see, how about the Android games? Google Play Network, Google is banned in China. How people download their games? They must download their games from different portals, different websites. We call it distributors, distribution channels. So that is, if you want to dis um, launch your game in China, you need to have publisher, and the distributor. Why publisher? Because in China, the distributor is more than 400. You cannot reach everyone. So only, so you must find a, try to find a qualified publisher, and then they can approach as many 
distributor as possible. And of course, time is really limited. <laughs> so I just uh, share with you some brief ideas. And then the last uh, one I wanted to give you is the recipe, some trip about the successful games in China. So that is almost the salary, uh, you see, I'm sorry, the summary of my presentation. As I said before, you see some, you see some publishers in China as uh, sourcing for the shooting games. So anybody here have the good shooting game, if you are interested to launch in China, and then you can contact me. So that is. Do we have any questions That's for Jewel? No one's entering the Chinese market with the game? Um, is there anything, any advice you can give somebody who wouldn't want to do free to play in the Chinese market? Is there any, uh, is there any way? to get profit without being free to play? Uh, I'm sorry? So if you have a game that isn't free to play, yes. is there any way to get into the Chinese market? Yes, a free to, you see you have the in-app purchase. But w without free to play, so if you're Oh, you see, for the advertisement. Okay. That is. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, do you have any advice for legal or technical hurdles in China or challenges that um, foreign companies might face, especially with regards to game development and game publishing? Yeah, that is uh, something, you know, uh, in China, yes. You see, in Britain, yeah, they are very strict for some, some issues so in the game. That's why we're back to the thing. You better not launch the things by yourself, you see. You go to a qualified, you see, uh, publisher. They will help you. So that would be like Tencent, for example? Yeah, they have the team for that, you see, they know how to play. <laughs> All right, thanks. Uh, you said uh, you kind of have to go with the publisher, but is there any chance in the future that the market might open up a little bit more to any developers that are afraid of working with publishers? Because I understand that publishers take a, a very large cut of the revenues, uh, and that's got to turn yes. off some developers. Yeah. Is yeah. there any chance of that changing in the future? Uh, right now, you see, the only thing I suggest uh, for my observation, generally, you know, for the sharing, is a share is a 334, three, something like that. What is the 334? So you see developer, publisher, and the distributor. So if you find someone who has the distrib who, ha who is a publisher and also the distributor, that will have a squeeze some, some margin. <laughs> That's my suggestion. Well, that's all we have time for, so let's give a big round of applause. Thank you very much.